Assalamu alaikum students, I hope all of you will be fine and the blessed students today I am going to recap the important formulas we have done in throughout the terms Let's go and recap and review the entire topics we have done in the topics In measurements we have done the length, mass, density, volume, time period, how can you calculate the length You can easily calculate the length by using the meter rule, you can easily calculate the length by using the one year caliper, micrometer and Trendle wheel. You know the least count of these instruments I have already shared with you. So least count is a very important. If you know the least count, you can easily uh, find the measurements uh, to the extent. For example, one year caliper can measure the uh, 0.01 centimeter. This is the least count. So it means the one year caliper can measure the two decimal places, but the micrometer can measure the three decimal places in centimeter and in two decimal places in millimeter. The second thing when you are going to measurement the volume is a displacement method is a very simple method you can find the volume of the liquid initially and if suppose you are you are asking to find the volume of this liquid you can easily find by observing this 24 centimeter cube you can easily find the density if you know the mass if you know the volume of any substance for example if you know the mass of the liquid you know the volume of the liquid uh, you can easily find the density of the liquid as well. If you find the volume of the stone by using the displacement method, then you can easily find the density of the stone as well. But to find the density, you must know the mass of the stone. The next one, you can easily find the reading by using the micrometer you have already performed in the lab. How can you find the reading? There are the two scales. One of them is a main scale, another is a circular scale. And by using the formula of the micrometer, Reading is equal to main scale reading plus circular scale readings times least count. This is a formula which helps you to find the reading by using the micrometer. And the main scale reading is very clear 0.51 and this one is 2. And the circular scale reading is how much? You can see this is a circular scale reading. It I think is 34. So by using the values and the least count 0.01 millimeter, you can easily calculate the reading by using the micrometer. The second thing you can find the time by using the time period by, uh, by using the pendulum stopwatch and you have already done how can you find the time period of the pendulum you will find the time of the multiple vibrations I uh, am going to write the formula over there for the time period of the pendulum time of the multiple vibration divided by number of vibration then you can find the time period formulas are very important in physics so you must uh, memorize the all formulas so you can uh, you can also improve your uh, readings by taking the multiple readings and by taking average speed you can easily find the speed by find by using the formula average speed distance over time but you will use this formula when the when you are going to find the average speed or you can use this formula when the speed is constant for example if an object is moving with the constant speed then you can use the formula or you can find the distance but if object is not moving the constant speed the speed is increasing so you cannot find the distance by using this formula you will use a different technique the area under the graph the velocity depends on the displacement but the speed depends on the distance displacement covered in unit time is speed displacement covered in unit time is a velocity the formula is very simple as we have done acceleration formula is very simple when the velocity is changing changing in velocity with respect to time is acceleration and you can find easily acceleration if you know the final velocity u is the initial velocity subtract these two velocity and divide it by time you can easily find the acceleration this formula is very common when the values are given uh, in the absence of the graph you can use this formula but if the graph is given for example in the distance time graph you can see the speed is increasing and the object come in the state of the rest in this graph what happening with the speed so if gradient is increasing at this time you can see the gradient is increasing so we can say that the speed is increasing at this line the speed is the constant but what happening when the line is a straight if the line is a straight line it represents the constant speed or if the line is horizontal for example at this situation blue line there is no distance cover so we can say the speed is a zero so in this uh, situation and what happening when the line is moving in this way so we can say that the speed is a decreasing 
so there are the three situations constant speed straight line increasing gradient is increasing speed decreasing gradient the decreasing speed no gradient zero gradient means the zero speed object will be in the state of the rest so gradient of the distance time graph remember distance time graph ka gradient hamesha speed ke bare mein information deta hai lekin speed time graph ka jo gradient hoga it always represent acceleration तो ये बात आपने अच्छे से माइंड में रखनी है फॉर एग्जांपल यहाँ पे अब ये चीज़ देखें ये जीरो नहीं है रेस्ट नहीं है एट दिस टाइम आई एम गोइंग टू मार्क विद द ब्लू लाइन इज अ टर्मिनल वेलोसिटी कांस्टेंट वेलोसिटी रेस्ट क्या है फिर वेयर इज द रेस्ट सो यू कैन सी दिस वन इज अ रेस्ट वेयर द स्पीड इज द जीरो दिस वन एन वॉट हैपनिंग फ्रॉम ए टू बी ए टू बी द ऑब्जेक्ट इज एक्सेलरेटिंग बिकॉज वेलासिटी इज इंक्रीजिंग एंड हाउ कैन यू फाइंड दिस एक्सेलेशन बाई टेकिंग द टेक्निक्स राइज ओवर रेड लेट सपोज फ्रॉम ए टू बी Rises how much? I'm going to show you right over there. Twenty meter per second. Assuming that velocity is twenty meter per second, time is starting from two second to six second. So you know the run. You can calculate this value from two to six is how much? This value is four. So rise is twenty. Run is four. So by using these two values, you can easily calculate the acceleration. And if you are going to ask, if if examiner ask you, find the distance covered. so you will use the technique area under this graph or if examiner ask you find the distance covered in these 2 seconds 2 to 6 so how can you find the area you will use the formula 1 by 2 base times height so guys you know very well you can easily find the distance from the speed time graph by finding the area you can find the acceleration by finding the rise over run so these two formulas are very very important and if let's suppose if examiner ask you find the distance covered when the object is moving with the constant velocity then you will just find this area but if the examiner ask you the total distance covered so you will find the total area so the techniques should be remember that in the speed time graph area under the graph represent the distance whereas the gradient of the graph represent the acceleration and in the free fall initially when an object fall its acceleration will be constant for the few seconds 1 to 2 second that is 10 meter per second square but when air resistance act upon it its resultant force will decrease for example the person is going downward with the 600 newton force so its weight is the same 600 newton 600 newton but let's suppose at this time the air resistance is 100 newton but air resistance is 400 newton and the air resistance is 600 newton so the resultant force is gradually decreases in this case 600 minus 100 resultant force is 500 newton in the downward direction 600 minus 400 200 newton in the downward direction so what happening with the resultant force is decreasing so if the resultant force at this time the resultant force is zero so acceleration is zero so in free fall you can see clearly that resultant force is decreasing that's why acceleration will also decreases and from the graph you can see clearly that the resultant force is decreasing acceleration is decreasing at a particular time when the resultant force is zero the object moves with the constant velocity at this time upward forces and the downward forces are equal and at this point when he open his parachute the speed is decreasing again after a particular time upward forces are balanced and you can say that object again moving with the terminal velocity i hope this one is very clear to all of you mass and weight the very important relation between them the w weight you can easily find the weight by using the formula weight is equal to m times t where g is a gravitational field strength it depends on the it is uh, depends on the mass of the planet और ये आपके पास गिवन होती है नॉर्मली लेकिन अर्थ के लिए इसकी वैल्यू 9.8 न्यूटन है डिफरेंट प्लैनेट्स के लिए डिफरेंट है सबसे ज़्यादा जो है वो आपके पास सन की है उसके बाद जुपिटर और फिर ये देख सकते हैं आप आपके लिए अर्थ की जो है वो 9.8 न्यूटन है वेट फाइंड करने के लिए फार्मूला बहुत सिंपल है वेट फाइंड करने के लिए जो इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स हैं वो न्यूटन मीटर है लेकिन मैथ्स के लिए नॉर्मली फिजिकल बैलेंस यूज़ किया जाता है अगर आप ये राइट साइड पर जो इंस्ट्रूमेंट देख रहे हो और आप इसके जरिए वेट फाइंड कर रहे हैं So if you know the weight, you can easily find the mass by using the formula. How you can convert or you can make the subject mass is equal to weight over g. So it's a very simple technique. By using the formula, you can easily find the mass. If you know mass, you can find the weight. If you know weight, you can find the mass. And if you know both weight and mass, you can easily find the value of the g. 
so mass remains constant but weight will not constant it depends on the g where the gravitational field is strength greater the weight will be the greater where the gravitational field is strength less the weight will be less density depends on the mass and volume so you can easily find the density of an object by memorizing this formula mass over volume is very important and now you can easily find the mass by using the physical balance electronic balance you can find the volume by using the displacement method or if the shape is regular then you can easily find by using the technique by using the formula if the density of an object is low you know very well it will float if it's greater than water it will sink down so mass and volume will helps you to finding the density now you can easily find the internal diameters of the ob object external diameter depth by using the one year caliper or but if uh, sometime you are going to find these measurements of the sphere cube cylinder so you must measure the length and you can easily find these length by using the one year caliper this one is also a method by which you can easily find the volume of the stone when you put the stone in the liquid the liquid fall down into this measuring cylinder and you can easily calculate the volume of the liquid the second thing again i'm going to show you that the density is a very easy and you can easily find them now the hooke's law states that that you can easily find the extension due to the force for example there is an object initial uh, length of the spring is given over there that is 10 cm but final length is also given that is how much is 14 or uh, something i think sorry 11.4 something so you can easily find how much extend the spring extension is 11.4 minus 10 this one is 1.4 cm this extension basically depends on the mass of this block greater the mass greater the extension so you know very well according to the Hooke's law force and extension is greater and when you convert the relation into equation this is a Hooke's law where k is a spring constant and you can easily find by using the formula k is equal to force over extension sometime we have a graph and the, when you draw the graph so you know very well force extension are directly proportional now that's why there is a straight line but after some time if they are not proportional it means spring lose its elasticity and this point is known as the elastic limit and after the spring loses elasticity we can say you can see that's permanent deform so there are the difference this spring is not uh, this spring retain its elasticity but the, the this spring is permanently deformed because it crosses the elastic limit so there are the two graphs in front of you for example if i'm going to show you the one graph is this one the, but sometime we have to face a graph like this in this graph there is a length of the spring and the force at this time the force is a zero but the length is showing over there let's suppose four centimeter this is the original length of the spring and after some time or after when you applied the force of the uh, let's suppose 10 newton force what happened with the length of the spring it's six centimeter or maybe eight centimeter so what is this extension you can easily find the extension by subtracting these two values so guys the formula is very important in the physics again i'm going to tell you the units you can find easily the resultant force when the two forces are there same direction you will add them in opposite direction you will subtract them and if the forces makes an angle of the 90 degree with each other you will use the head to tail rule for example there are the three newton force in the forward direction four newton force in the back uh, upper direction then you can easily find their resultant velocity by joining the tail of the first one to the head of the second one and by measuring this length or by using the pythagoras theorem you can easily find that resultant force is 5 newton so the forces we have done the opposing force is a friction which oppose it but you can find the resultant force by subtracting the friction from the forward force and one thing should be clear in mind that any object which move in a circle the always the more the force act towards the center of the circle so in circular motion it must uh, you must remember about it and this formula is very very important is a newton second law formula which says that resultant force produce acceleration so this force is a resultant force we are mass m and a acceleration and this formula will helps you in problem solving if you know mass you can is an acceleration you can find the force if you know force acceleration you can find the mass if you know force and the mass you can find the acceleration it depends on the situation which physical quantity is going to ask 
I hope this one is very clear to you. Vectors, uh, we have, I, I, I have already discussed with you that an object moves in a circle, the force always directed toward the center and we can say that acceleration will also direct it towards the center. Then secondly, I am going to discuss with you, the second thing is I am going to discuss with the scalar and vector. Scalars are the physical quantity which can easily explain with the help of numbers and the unit. But vectors will explain with the direction only five to six vectors in your syllabus. You can see uh, we have already discussed with you. For example, displacement, velocity, acceleration, all types of the forces, momentum, and another vectors are moments, but you will discuss in the second term. Uh, the second thing, these all these are the vectors, and you can easily find the resultant force. I have already discussed with you how can you find by using them. For example, the two forces, one of them is a red one, another is a green one. You join them in such a way the tail of the first one meet with the head of the other one, and you can easily find the resultant force like the orange one in such a way that you will join the tail of the first vector to the head of the second one, green one. And easily by applying the Pythagoras theorem, you can easily calculate the magnitude of this force. The second thing is the momentum depends on the mass and velocity, products of the mass and velocity. Jab bhi momentum find karna hoga, mass ko velocity se aap multiply kar dete hai. And one thing should be clear in your mind, momentum basically is uh, depends on the mass and velocity. And when you apply some force on an object, this force can change the momentum of an object. For example, a ball is coming to your sides. So when you hit the ball, its velocity will increase or decrease. So momentum will change. So it means force play a very important role to change the momentum. So that's why the change in momentum, this one is also called the impulse, is depend on the force. And how can you find the change in momentum? For example, the ball is moving. Initial speed with the six, uh, 75 meter per second. But when you hit the ball with some force, its speed may change. So you can find the momentum by multiplying mass with the velocity. So initial momentum, let's suppose 60 multiply by 75, that is initial momentum and final momentum, the ball when hit it and again move with this uh, by the greater velocity, let's suppose 80 meter per second, then the same mass, so you can find the momentum multiplying by both values, 80 into 60, maybe it becomes 480 something. Uh, sorry, 4800. So you can easily find the momentum by multiplying mass with the velocity. But one thing should be clear in your mind. You must convert the units into gram to kilogram. Okay. So units are uh, very important. If there is a units mass of the units is a gram, so you may convert or you can you should convert the grams into kg. Basically, SI units of the mass is a kg. So easily you can find the momentum of this. For example, you can see that the G, the, when it's convert the mass from 0 0.06 kg times 75, the momentum of the ball is at this time 4.5 kilogram meter per second. And again, you can see there mass is greater, but speed is less, but the momentum is the same. It depends on the both value, mass and velocity. Now, I'm going to show you about one thing. For example, the ball is moving at this time, I'm you. And when it hits the blue one, its velocities change. And now it's moving with the velocity v and bounce back. The second ball is moving with the velocity v. So now the total momentum before collision, the total momentum after collision always equal. I'm going to find the momentum of this one. This one is mu. At this time, its speed is the zero. So this momentum will also zero. But now, the momentum of the ball when it's bounced back, the negative velocity is minus mv and the momentum of big ball will be plus capital M capital V. So this is the total momentum after collision and this is the total momentum before collision. So according to the observation and experimental verification, it observed that normally the total momentum before collision and total momentum after collision are always equal. This one is a law of conservation of momentum. And this will help you in problem solving. Impulse basically is the change in momentum. For example, if I am going to ask the change in momentum of an object, for example, an object is moving with the thumb velocity of 2 meter per second, but force act on this block. 2 kg mass is moving with the velocity of 2 meter per second. 
now but the speed is increasing momentum is changed at this time the momentum is 4 but at this time the momentum is 8 so how much the change in momentum this one is 8 newton second this one is 4 newton second 8 minus 4 the change in momentum there is you can easily find the change in momentum by subtracting the final momentum from initial momentum that is 8 minus 4 answer is 4 4 newton second is the change in momentum change in momentum is also known as impulse so we can write over there this one is 4 newton seconds again i am going to show you that change in momentum is also dependent on the force so we can say that impulse is that is which is a change in momentum is directly proportional of the force so we have a very important relation between the impulse and the force if you are applying the force greater the force greater the change in momentum and this time is a time of contact with an object greater the time of contact greater will be the change in momentum so also you can find the impulse by using the formula by the uh, by if you know the force acting on the object if you know the time of contact you can easily calculate the impulse by using both formulas force into time as well as change in momentum thank you guys the formulas are very important so write the formulas in your papers because formulas have also marks and one thing should be clear in your minds be careful about the units thank you so much best of luck